Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a language related video and I had the idea of doing this because I recently finished the first round of Skype lessons that I did with an Italian teacher and I thought it might be interesting to reflect back over what I learned. This was the first time that I had ever done Skype classes. I'm much more accustomed to doing language classes in person. I also don't frequently do slash don't ever do private classes. So I wanted to compile a couple of things that I sort of learned from this process in case you guys are interested in doing Skype classes yourselves and are looking for some tips. So the first thing is definitely find a teacher that you can trust. I actually went through the language school that I want to do an immersion class with in Italy so I will link them down below it's called Il Sasso and they are in Montepulciano and I had heard about them I think I found them doing on my own research online and then I actually heard about them like independently from someone else and so with that kind of confirmation I decided to do a little bit more research and get in contact with them. So they are the school that whenever I get to go to Italy to do my immersion class, I'm going to do my classes with them. I think at this point, actually, it's been pushed back to 2021 just because of COVID. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. So just to be better safe than sorry is kind of my uh, philosophy right now. So in the meantime, I really wanted, like I've been looking forward to doing those Italian immersion classes for literally like about four years now and you know I was finally able to save up the money and have the time and like feel comfortable about doing it and you know everything happened so in order to still be able to do something related to Italian this summer I decided to go ahead and book individual Skype classes with them they do offer small group classes however I really wanted to do individual classes because I already have a basis, you know, I speak Spanish and French, so I have a basis with Romance languages. I've been kind of studying off and on on my own, so I do have a pretty solid basis in Italian, but like weird holes, and what I really wanted to focus on was speaking. And so just kind of taking into consideration what I wanted to get from the class, basically get comfortable speaking, improve my vocabulary, you know, really get that practice in that I needed. I decided to go for the private classes because I felt that one-on-one -on -one I would be able, it would be more beneficial because, you know, obviously if you're in a group class, you have to go at the, at the pace of, you know, most of the people. You are not going to get to speak as much one-on-one -on -one with the teacher and all of that. So I just decided to go ahead and do the private classes classes. So the school had me do like a placement test and so they could kind of gauge what my current level was and I think it was like an intermediate one which I was actually kind of shocked that it was that high given that I like sort of am haphazard about how I study Italian but cool um, and I actually think that really if they had done a speaking test I would have been much lower but because my general vocabulary and like grammatical knowledge in romance languages is pretty good I think that helped me anyway um so they had me do a placement test and then they placed me with a teacher so I I love my teacher she's amazing so what I ended up doing is I had a brief email conversation um with her ahead of time but I didn't really go into what I wanted from the class I kind of wanted to go into that first class and just sort of see what happened because I'd never done a Skype class before so I wasn't really sure what to expect. So the first thing that I did and I would say this is tip number one, probably the simplest tip everybody's going to think of is have a dedicated notebook. So because we were doing our classes on Skype, my teacher did use the chat function in order to write notes for me. And the benefit of that is that Anything that was like really necessary for me to write down, she wrote down for me and it was something that wasn't going to disappear that I could go back and do later. So the first thing I did was actually set up a little notebook. This is one that I got, um, I think I got it in like a Bujo meetup or something like that. It's just like a random spiral bound lined notebook, like not something I would use for bullet journaling, so perfect for Italian. And what I did is each time I had a class is I would label the top, so I'd have the date, the lesson number, and then any notes that I had. So having a notebook home for all your lessons and all of your notes and all that kind of stuff, I think is a really good idea. The second thing that I did is after that first lesson, I kind of brainstormed what I really wanted to get out of the class. And I actually wrote down some notes at the bottom here. 
and I it kind of so what I was looking for in the class sort of changed over time but my main concerns were I wanted to work on speaking more than anything else um, I wanted to work on you know my ability to communicate in Italian I wanted to work on my pronunciation so that it would be clear because for example in Italian they have the double letters and it does change the word so I wanted to make sure like that was something I was going to be able to make the distinction between I also as kind of time went on for example right before the last lesson like I think two lessons from the end I mentioned that I was interested in starting to read in Italian and so I actually have a book in Italian that I got like when I was in Italy that's short stories and so we actually worked on one of those short stories together so I would say the second tip is really know what you want from your class and ask for it because unlike in a regular you know group class where you're just kind of following the whims of the teacher because that's going to be what's like generally applicable to the most number of people when you have a private class you can really ask for it and as somebody who has studied languages off and on i am a language teacher i am able to ask for the specific things that i want more than just saying i want conversation or i want to learn how to read you know what i mean like i can ask for sort of more specific things and i try not to be too particular just because you don't need to backseat teach you know what i mean like i, I even though i am a language teacher i don't want to backseat teach my teacher and so i try to keep it broad enough that she would have the liberty to do whatever she wanted with the lessons and everything that she did I found really interesting and really useful but to give her some guidelines so that she's not like revising things that I already know or working on something that I'm like that's actually not like super useful for the type of things I'm going to be talking about so having some even vague ideas of what you want to do in your class and communicating those to your teacher. I would say that is a really, really good thing to do. The third tip I would say is if you're doing a Skype class and if your teacher is open to it, which mine was, um, I actually set up a Google Drive folder for Italian, like literally just I labeled it Italian, and I shared the folder with my teacher. And so that way she could drop documents in the folder and I could print them out ahead of class because I like, when I work with that kind of stuff, I actually really like to print them out and what I did is I actually sized them down and I printed them and stuck them into my notebook so any of the documents that we worked on in class are in my notebook even though I do still have that Google Drive folder that I can go back and reference the original document so that was a great way for her to share documents with me it was also a great way for me to do my homework so I would write my homework on the documents and then when we went through and corrected it I would correct it on the documents I have in here but what I frequently did is I would do them on the paper and then just do a really quick type up of the answers and then she could go ahead and she could correct them before class so that I could go ahead and already have have my exercises corrected and I could say okay like yeah I understand what I did here here and here but like I don't understand why this one was wrong can you explain it and so that I think actually saved us some time where we had this one place that we could both communicate and share information and so for example if I had something I wanted to share to, with her I could just put it in the drive same thing for her and I felt like it it was really useful and would definitely be something I would do again with even if ever I do like private lessons via Skype, which I don't know that I necessarily will, just that's a whole different story. But I did find it to be a really useful way to communicate that was less, um, it was less clunky than emailing back and forth. Email is good for certain things, but I found that using Google Drive or whatever kind of file sharing service you wanna use was actually just super helpful. And it also helped me keep things organized because I was able to go back through and organize by lesson. Just I have my own organizational system that I use. And so I was able to go back through and organize them so I could also keep the documents in the order that we did them, but have all of her notes and things like that. I did, for example, uh, a text that I had to write. And so I typed the text directly into Google Docs and then she saw it and she could go through and she could highlight and give me comments and feedback on there whereas it would have been much harder for me to make note of that if that was something that we did orally during the class. I would say tip number four would be this printing out anything that you have if you have the capacity to do so. I find it really helpful because I have a notebook dedicated to my Italian studies I find it really helpful to have all the documents in the order that we talked about them with like the exercises and the corrections in this notebook because this means that a couple years down the line when I'm going back through my Italian notes and I want to like revise stuff I don't have to then also go back into that folder that folder on Google is really helpful in terms of like 
in the moment working on the documents, but as a resource and a record, I actually really prefer to have things printed out. What I do like to do is all of my documents are printed on the back of paper that I've already used. So because of that, I did do them one-sided, but I sized them down. So all of my documents, I have two pages. So like, you know, imagine two A4 pages. I basically now have two A5 um, pages from the worksheet on one sheet of paper. And then I use my paper cutter to cut them down and tape them in here. And I know that it is a little bit wasteful to print out that stuff, but in terms of feeling like I'm getting the most out of my classes, I know that I need things on paper. Like if it stays in a digital format, I just, I can't connect to it as well. And so I really need to have that paper to look at. The one thing that I changed that I probably would not have done maybe a couple of years ago is instead of having a notebook and for example, a binder with every, all of my worksheets in there, I did put the worksheets in here. And I did that because you get the like direct chronology of your lessons rather than having to compare like, okay, this would have been this in my notebook, which means that it was these worksheets in my binder. It's just, all like lesson worksheets, lesson worksheets, like one right after the, the other. And I found that really helpful. So the fifth tip would be if you are using Skype or some place where she, your teacher is actually dropping in information for you, some of the things that she didn't necessarily write down, I would try and take notes. So I'd have my notebook open during the class and I would try and take notes for that kind of stuff. Anything that she actually wrote in the chat or anything that went into a Google document that I wanted to deal with later, I went through after my lesson and I tried insofar as I could immediately after my lesson, just copying down my notes from the Skype chat, for example, so that I have everything in here. I don't have, you know, 10 lessons worth that I then am trying to go back through and organize after the fact. I tried to do it after every single lesson and as much as possible immediately after every single lesson. And that way I didn't like lose time during the lesson trying to copy down all of those notes in the moment, but I did it, you know, close enough after the lesson that I still remembered why we had written that down and what it was for. And I think that it just helped give that like extra muscle memory of actually physically writing it helps it like be something that I remember more in the future. So those are kind of my takeaways from the first set of Skype classes that I did. I actually have done a second set because I have pushed my trip back so far. I decided that I wanted to do a second set kind of closely after the first. And the one thing that I'm changing for the second set of classes is the first set, I only did one a week because I wasn't sure how it was gonna work with the school year. We hadn't finished the school year yet and it ended up working out really well because we did go back to in-class teaching. And so having just once a week was perfect. But because I'm now on summer holidays, I want to talk, I actually need to email my teacher. Um, I want to do twice a week. I think that having, um, so, you know, say I keep my Monday classes and I do like Thursday or something like that or Wednesday or I don't know when. Having them split like kind of halfway through the week is I hope going to help me get on a better routine for studying Italian a little bit each day. And so my goal is to really sort of try to make the most of having all of this free time by doing those two classes a week and booking, for example, you know, 30 minutes or an hour every single morning that I'm going to work on Italian. So whether it's homework for my class, whether it is, you know, um, trying to read some in Italian and taking notes if I need to, trying to watch something in Italian or what have you. So one of the things that I need to do before my next round of classes, so basically I finished uh, I think last week was my last one. So I finished my last round of classes last week and I'm going to start my next round at the end of July. I wanted to have like two weeks off just to kind of let things cogitate and take a little bit of break, focus on some other things and then like dive back into it fresh. And so what I wanna do before, you know, before that start of my next round of classes is to go back through my notes, sit down and really think about like, okay, if I have classes two times a week, I have five weeks of classes, what do I really wanna focus on? So for example, um, I'd like to talk to her about maybe doing some kind of an activity with a like TV series. So maybe choose one episode that we work on and 
try and like do some side, some sort of an activity with that. I'd like to do a little bit more reading activities. So I, one of the things I'd like to do before my classes start is read a little bit more from that book that we did the first short story in. I would like to really work on some like prepositions I think are still something that I need to do more work on. And I actually have a ton of information in here from the first round that I need to go through and actually like look at and then come back to her with questions. So I wanna do a little bit of brainstorming and try and give her a couple of things that I'd like to work on, like, you know, maybe prioritize it a little bit, but let it kind of open, be open to her, um, like what kinds of documents she finds and all of that kind of stuff, but just give her a few ideas. One of the things might be to see if she'll have me do, like she had me do a written text, maybe see if she'll have me talk about a topic that I can like record myself and have her give me feedback rather than just having it be like a fully spontaneous thing where I don't necessarily know all the words. So like, I just wanna kind of take some time and think about that to make sure I'm getting the most from those 10 hours that I have with her. Hopefully I will be able to fit everything in this notebook. So I've, I think I've used about half of it for the first round of classes. So hopefully I can just fit the second half in here and I'll have a really good document of my classes that I can go through because she's given me a combination of like grammatical lessons and exercises and vocabulary and like different things. So I wanna go back through and look at all of that as well before my lessons start, but hopefully I'll be able to keep everything all in one notebook so it's all together. Um, this would also be a great way to finish up using this notebook. So I would like that as well. So those are just some of my thoughts about doing language classes via Skype. And I know there's different ways of doing them. Um, for example, I've heard of italki, that's how I say, I don't know if that's actually how it's pronounced, but I'll link them down below. I've heard of them a ton as like a really good resource for doing online classes. And sometimes you can do um, like language exchanges where it's for free. Sometimes you can do ones where you actually pay for it. I'm sure that there are a number of online schools that would offer Skype lessons as well. I know, for example, in France, you can find language teachers on Le Bon Coin, so that's something that you could potentially do via Skype if you don't wanna do them in person. So if you're looking at something like that, I actually was really hesitant at first because I thought it was going to be really awkward, and it is. Like the first lesson is a little bit awkward, but it is a really good way of getting like having those language classes when you don't necessarily have a teacher locally or you're in a situation where you can't really meet up with a teacher locally so yeah just kind of a random little language video. I feel like I haven't done a lot of language stuff lately, so I wanted to do one. So if you guys have any comments or questions, let me know. I will try and link everything that I talked about down below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, so if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and are actually watching my end screen and you're not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you would. There's a little button right there for you to do it. And if you're interested in watching some more of my videos, I have links to two of my older videos off to the left there, so you can check those out if you would like to, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.